Well, today we have a Roundhouse products. Uh, this is, as you can tell, this is an old kit, model die casting. Uh, they're old timer series. <clears throat> I don't know how old this thing is. I do not see a date on it anywhere. Uh, <laughs> it does have the original price on the box but uh, let's open this thing up here we're going to assemble this start assembly of it today see how far we get and this is a brand new kit <clears throat> someone had donated it to our club and uh, I've had this sitting around for a while and I just never have got to it and uh, I'm kind of looking for a date on here as I read down through these parts but uh, I don't see a, a date if anybody out there know well here's a date the revision on this parts list is uh, 10 of 78 so this <laughs> at least the paper is 40 years well at least the the instructions are 40 years old but uh, yeah we'll we'll go through this we'll probably start with the tender that may be the easiest thing to do Kind of get some of this stuff out of the way. It goes through super detailing for this kit. Let me uh, wrong way. zoom out there a little bit. Maybe you can see the whole the whole instruction sheet. So now here's here's a date of six seventy six. mechanism for the gears and everything drivers so this is going to be a fairly complex kit to put together it looks like I've never done one of these and I thought well I'll give it a shot so I think we'll go with the modern period <laughs> modern circa 1920 to 1940 so anyway and there's our parts list for that dig through some of this it's just old tissue paper Get some of this stuff out of the way Let's see what we got in here. Here's our tender, our boiler. Front of the boiler's metal. <clears throat> Here's our motor underneath this. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm trying to get this out of here without. I don't know if I'm not going to be able to get it probably without ripping the paper. That's stuck to the paper. There's our drivers, some other thing, other detail. And I do hope that all the parts are here for the kit. There's our wheels for the tender. Well, let's uh, let me go through this, and I'll try and find what we need for the tender. Denver and Rio Grande. There's our weight. I will have to, it does look like I'll have to go through. Let me zoom you back in here a little bit. <clears throat> go through and clean some of the flash off of these. Some 
trucks. Oh. Looks like brass. And so I guess the rest of our parts are <coughs> under the box. all locomotive parts I believe yeah and yeah, that's for the locomotive <laughs> if anyone's interested in some uh, new products from roundhouse I've got the uh, got a little guide here uh, this is catalog Number 12, Newsletter 1, Newsletter Volume 1, Number 1. So, that's kind of interesting. Uh, oh, piece of metal in there. That's probably for our boiler when we get to it. Yep. And then I've got the order form. Oh, here we go. Here's a date. October of 81. So, anyway, now that we've done our little historical dig, that out of the way. Uh, just a quick look through this roundhouse showcase. Anyway, back to what, uh, back to our original purpose here. We're going to put this tender together. Uh, <clears throat> all right, um, we'll go through, and I'm not going to film all the parts. Like right now, I'm going to go through, open everything up. Uh, I'll clean our flash off and make sure I have everything and then I'll come back and we'll we'll go from there okay I've got some stuff prepped up here I got my flash all off the sides of the weight here uh, I've got the screws laid out and I tapped the holes for the screws and so we'll go ahead and we can <clears throat> Put uh, put our weight in our tender. So we'll just kind of get that in there as a dry fit. Okay. So there's there's our weight. Um, Seeing how this was an old kit, it had one of the old style horn couplers. I've got a uh, KD, and that's a one one forty eight whisker coupler. And we'll go ahead and put that in there. And here's our. cover for that well if I can get it set down on there and I've got the screw for that and being so it's an old kit they're all flat flat screws or slotted screws I mean that and that works now we 
can go ahead and put uh, and you can see these trucks uh, what I had to do to them they've got a pickup you can see these two copper lines here that attach to the bottom or the top I mean so get that and now it does specify in the direction because these are insulated the axles are insulated you can see that little black washer uh, that will go on the uh, fireman's side just like I've got it there so now get my screw back on here So there's one, and actually, I have that on. <laughs> I put it on upside down. I wouldn't know why. No, I didn't. I didn't put that on upside down. What am I thinking? Ah, I'm going crazy. Okay. other so there's both of our trucks now we can go and put in our drawbar now the one thing you'll notice there is one screw right in here and that is where our motor pickup connects to it. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put it in right now. I'll wait until I get the locomotive done. We'll get this in here. That all tighten down. There's our drawbar. And there is basically our tender so and now when uh, oh that one is upside down no it's not they're the same I am losing my mind okay everything's the same there but uh, all right so we've got that now I'll go ahead and I've got these, I've got the detail parts for the tender. I'll go ahead and and cut these off, the sprues, and then we'll come back. I'll get them all prepped up. We'll come back and put the rest of the, uh, put the rest of the tender together. So, okay, I've got a couple little parts here cleaned up for the, uh, to detail out the tender, I've got an air tank right in there. And then I've got these two, these are valve handles that go up in here. Uh, this, uh, this is a little barrel that it sits right in there. And actually I missed a little bit on that. So I'll get that cleaned off real quick. Okay, and that's about it for the tender. So we'll go ahead and I'll start setting these. I'll set these little parts. Yeah, I'll try to set these little parts. Let's say that. And I will, I've got some styrene cement here after I get these in position I'll go ahead and 
and basically I, I use these little these are touch and flow glue sticks I fill them up with styrene cement and then all you have to do is come in touch them and that applies just enough glue to the area that you want okay and that and then I'll drop this uh, air tank one it had a couple little flats there on one side but you can't see those little flats but I'll drop that try to center it up best I can and then I'll go through with the uh, glue stick okay so there's our I hate to flip that up on the side right now because the uh, air tank may come off. But uh, that stuff usually doesn't take long to. Okay. So there's our completed tender. Draw bar. Everything. Now I guess we'll have to start on the. Uh, on the locomotive so that's really going to be a, a challenge here but anyway we'll get it done and uh, I'll get some parts ready and then we'll come back and work on that some I've got the uh, locomotive up here on the table now and uh, <clears throat> I've got the, all the parts laid out for it so I'm gonna do like I did the tender I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna clean the flash off of off the frame and so we'll get all that off and we'll get these parts separated out I'm gonna assemble the drivers and everything so I'm gonna assemble the pilot truck there's some more screws and the old horn coupler which we won't use but uh, anyway we'll go through get this stuff cleaned up and then I'll come back and we'll start putting things together as we go. Okay, we're back here. I've got this stuff cleaned up. So, according to the instructions, and I'm gonna have to follow these instructions, this isn't just going to be picking a part out and, and going. Uh, our first step after we've cleaned up all of our burrs and whatnot is to install this gear and this shaft through this hole. So the small gear faces toward the left. I'm going to get this... Uh, little pin started here get that just so so um, have to hold this with a pair of pliers I believe okay now I'll kind of tap that pin in Make sure it gets started right. Okay. So there's our pin and gear. <laughs> little brass hammer. Got this from Woodcraft. Really nice little hammer. Anyway. Something to play with. Alright. Now our next step is to uh, install the motor. I've got the screw right there and take that out and that'll go that sits right down on there get my hole lined up 
I'll try and drop that. Well, I knew that wouldn't line up like that. And that's a stainless screw, so I can't use a magnet to set it in there with. Let's see if I can get it in there like this. Okay. So there's that. I'll try. Hopefully I can get that lined up without looking at it. And what do you know? Well, that is in there according to the instructions. Get that tightened down. Doesn't look like there's a lot of uh, engagement with that tooth. But I wonder, because there's no spacers or anything back here. That would I would think seem to make that gear run a lot smoother. But anyway, that's just the first two steps. So maybe we'll. Uh, maybe we'll find something else that goes there. Okay, there should be a very slight amount of play between the worm gear teeth and the step gear. Tighten the motor mounting screw and rotate the armature with your finger. Making sure there's no bind. Check over the relationship of the motor worm gear and the gear mesh of the step gear. If the teeth are binding, you may need the shim up the motor slightly. Please place a piece of notebook paper under the front of the motor and recheck. Test the, test the gear assembly by attaching power leads. Use a 12 volt DC power source only and starting at minimum gradually increase the power. Repeat this procedure in reverse also. Okay, well I wonder I think I'm going to pull this motor back out and see if I can lower it. I'm pretty sure I got all the, the flash out of it. Unless there's something there. Let me take a file. Hit this a little bit. There's not a lot here. But that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> what I'm doing, there's a little lip right in here. And I'm going to file that down a little bit. Get a little better engagement on that gear. It'd make me feel better anyway. Okay. Because that screw is supposed to sit down. Now that's... That looks better. But that doesn't. If you set it back where it looks like it should be, yeah, I guess we'll give it a shot there. screw line back up again. I 
<laughs> that didn't work at all. Well, there's that. Well, we'll go with it for now, and we'll see what happens. Uh, let's see. Hold the underframe upside down and place drive wheels into the axle slots with the insulated red dot. <laughs> okay, to the dot to the left side. Okay, so they want. Uh, our drive wheels. There's our drive wheel. Into the axle slots with the insulated. To the re to the left. So that'll be right there. And well. There's a little more flash that I didn't get out. Might as well check all of them there. Well, I thought I had this all cleaned up. Okay, red to the left, Okay, well, there's that. But I want to take a little bit, a little bit out of that right there. If you can see that. I don't need much, but it looked like it could bind right in there there that give me more clearance okay so that's that uh, place the idler drivers in the slots at the geared driver into the slot 5 and the blind driver, no flange, into slot 6. So we've got this one. Of course, remember we got to make everything with the red to the left. Now remember, I'm upside down here. So. Nope. 
One more and then clean out. Okay. There's all my drivers in. Okay. Add the cover plate. Here's our cover plate. And uh, really, uh, let me, before I close that up, and after I put that back, I'm going to get out some oil. Plastic compatible. And I'm just going to put a drop on each one of these. That way we'll have a little lubricant for when we get this thing together. So we're going to put our plate in. Um, looks like it's going to sit this way. So there's our plate. And let's see, how does it attach? <clears throat> Two quarter, two number two screws, quarter inch long. So, okay, I've got my two screws. One set here because our, our pilot truck will attach up here. Let's get that temporarily there. And then that one will go in there. Like everything is moving fine. <clears throat> Let's see, what are these? Okay, let me take and you really can't see that, but it is rotating. So, and then I'll, I'll put gear lube in that uh, before we get it all together. All right. If there is no binding, remove the motor from the underframe. Place the mechanism without the motor on a piece of track and test roll it. The chassis should roll smoothly at this stage. Okay, well, <laughs> it says to do that. <laughs> of course, it tells me to mount the motor. Okay, mount the motor now. Then it, you have to put the wheels in, which we did. It tells you to put the underplate on. Now it tells you to remove the motor. You can't get to the screw without taking that out. 
So, I mean, it's no big deal. But, uh, but still. And everything does roll smoothly. So, <clears throat> and we checked that. Our drive gear is all good. So, we'll move on to the next step. Now, that's probably not right, but that's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to do our side rods. Before assembling side rods, deburr. Okay, well, I have attempted to do that on my side rods. I'm sure, like in the last part, we didn't get it all. Um, do not over enlarge the holes. Attach the side rod to the drivers using the hex head pins. Okay, now I'm going to assume that these are the pins. Well, that's not it. That wasn't hex headed and it wasn't a pin. Okay, well, I wonder where those things are. <laughs> Since this kit's 40 years old, I wonder if I can call the company and get uh, replacement parts. Um, okay, these are the hex headed pins that they're talking about. Plastic. Plastic pins. Um, so I'll get my side rod out here. <coughs> and I do need to clean some more off. So I'm going to clean some more and I'll come back. Okay, I've got the side rods cleaned up. I've got my little hex pins right there. Here's the side rods. Went ahead and kind of lined my drivers up. Uh, not sure what the best way to do this is. We'll try. Hopefully, I can just, let me get my pliers that have a <coughs> serrated edge. Maybe that'll be better. Go ahead and put that in there. And... Okay, that started. So these back two will get short pins. And I know that needs pushed in farther, but I'll do that in a minute. At least I'll have it there. Um, now the actual driver, it gets a longer pin. Let me go ahead and hook. I'm going to do the front driver. I'll go ahead and put the pin in it. That way it'll loose okay so all of them are connected besides this one 
Okay. Now, they're all started. Place pin, pins loosely until final assembly. Okay, well, that's about as loose as you can get it. So let me go over here to the other side. And all of that is lined up. I'll set it on this little piece of uh, foam. And we'll go ahead put these in. There's that. Now I need one more long pin. Okay. So there that is temporarily in place. And I won't have to quarter those. Good. I've got the, the quartering, the Northwest Short Line quartering tool for that. And at least I won't have to do it. Okay. I guess our next step is the crosshead assembly. Uh, we've got our main rod. in our crosshead. So this is our crosshead. This is our main. Try to look here. Let's see. Slide crosshead pin on back side through the hole in the end of the main rod on the back side all right that's the back well that's not right okay Well, that's got to be right, because that's the only thing that there is. There's no flash. Secure assembly by upsetting the pin as illustrated. Okay, there's that. If you could see any of that. And then by upsetting the pin as illustrated. So they have a screwdriver just applying pressure to that screw head. 
Uh, let me get a older screwdriver. Let me zoom in on that for a minute. Let me see if you can. Let's see if I can. What I need to do is just push down on that little center right there and that's not going to focus okay what I'm going to do is push down on that little pin and hopefully it'll hold Okay, well, that's in there. It really didn't do a lot, but we still have our movement. So let's do, let's do this rod. Okay, we'll do the same thing to that one. All right, so there's that. Now let me, I'll zoom back out here. All right, now we're to the cylinder assembly. So we've got our cylinder. And we've got our yoke. And I believe that will all, well, that will sit in here like this, actually. Turn this around, we'll get some perspective. That'll be there. This will be here. That'll be there. So that's that's what we're trying to accomplish. Zoom in a little more. Okay. Insert guide rods. And our guide rods. Are the brass so they all go in here if I need to do this one side at a time or, or what. And I don't have a good Okay, I think I've got them all, by pushing them down, I think I've got them all pretty well straight. So, 
So we've got our cross head now and our yoke. <laughs> Tap into place with a small hammer. Still not sure if I've got them in far enough. They're in farther than they were. But time will tell. Do not force but be firm. Attach cylinder securely to the under frame with a number 256 by 58. Yeah. And I wonder where that is. So that's going to go here. Looks like my pins are going to be in the way. So there's my number 256 screw that I can dig out of this small little parts bag. Temporarily secure it. And there should be a nut. There's the nut. I know I think I know why they want to temporarily secure that because on the bottom of the boiler that screw will hold our body on. So all right, position finished cross head and main rod assemblies onto guide rods. <coughs> and then attach the main rod to the third driver using the long hex pin. I'm going to assume this is the third driver. This is going to sit like this. Nope. A little bit of flash there. Clean some of that off. <laughs> what are the chances? Help if I would put it on there the right way. Okay, that slides pretty well. And it says to attach it to the third one with a long hex pin. So I'll get my hex pins back out. that out. There 
There's that. Now I guess on to the other side. And that long pin is right in the way. Take that around. This is probably why <clears throat> they want you to have all that loose. And I'm going right against my guide rod. pins out and that pull that back out now I'm hitting over here on this one Okay, now take that out, put this back in. That seems to work fairly well. And remember, we'll get all this stuff lubed up when we get closer to being complete. <clears throat> Assemble the yoke over guide rods and attach to the frame using a 2 3 16 screw. <clears throat> so,
pictures here. Okay. So that's what holds the drive rods. That's that assembly, looks like. And then we've got a couple of, uh, well, if I can find it, the valve reverse rod use handle wire. So I've got to take a piece of wire It's here in the box. If I can grab a hold of it. Piece of wire. And that will go in these tiny little holes right here and in there and there are only two you have to be cut the length and that's how that'll go so I'll cut that off There's that one. Get it straight. And it pull it completely out. Got another one the same size. that cut and it says I want you to glue these in uh, I, need to, oh, I need to put a screw down through that So we'll get our screw down. And that is not long enough. Used the wrong screw. Take it off of that for a minute. Okay, there's that. Now we'll put our wire we'll 
we'll try to put our wire of glue on those. There's that. Get my actually. Uh. Get my CA glue out. And I just put it on the head of a pin. Just to get a little, little dab. take care of that anyway we'll go ahead and we'll put this back together because I can do this now So we'll get that all together. And that'll sit right in there like that. Okay. Now, let's move on. Attach the drawbar. Attach the drawbar to the rear of the underframe with a two by one quarter screw, see figure six. Okay, well the drawbar <clears throat> is currently attached to the uh, tender, so I'll wait until I get the body on. Uh, coupler assembly we can put on the front coupler so let's do that uh, I want to look and see if I have another oh I do okay that's a number 148 Whisker KD Whisker Coupler. So we'll get that set into place. May have to make a little bit of adjustment on it. But doesn't look too awful bad. And that will attach with I gotta put this plate on. Got that plate, and I got an eighth inch screw. Oh, oh, there it went. There we go. Now, get this crazy screw in here. No, 
Oh, sure. Go ahead and fall over on me. Okay. Back that off just a touch. Probably I'll put a little graphite in there or something. There we go. Okay. What I'll do now, take and put this front pilot on. And that attaches with that little screw right here. Here's where it'd be helpful to have another hand. Of course, I could get my cradle out, and that would at least hold the Okay, there's that. So I've still just got to put the details on the body. And this, well, it can be painted. I am not going to be painting this. If the club wants it painted, well, then we'll see what happens. But for now, I'm just going to put it together and we'll go with that. But, all right, now I'll start cleaning up some of the parts. Well, let's uh, kind of look at it here with the uh, tender behind it. So that'll be the finished product when we get done. but I'm not going to attach that. Until I get all the parts on and we get ready to run it. But anyway, all right. Let me get these uh, other parts cleaned up and we'll start putting them on. Okay, I've got some stuff here uh, fit it up. Just got to glue it, glue it on. And I've already done a couple of pieces just so I could get them out of my way because they were kind of tough to get to. These small air cylinders and these brake cylinders down here on the uh, on the bottom. But uh, now we'll go through and get my little glue stick out here or my touch and flow get some glue in it okay now we're ready to glue some pieces together Start over here with the with the stack, and I've got this cab mount here, or 
vent. We'll get two, two of them. One there. Now if I can get it straight. Okay. I'll let that sit there before I glue the front of it. Some cylinders here. Like I say, all I gotta do is touch that. And that goes right in. Stack. Some of these pieces are very tiny, like always. Street. that. I've got this whistle. Put that in. Touch that. I've got a belt here. And it Goes in kind of, kind of tough. That'll take care of the bell. Drop a glue here in the back of it. Okay. Now I've got this other air tank. It'll help if I get you back in the frame. There's the glue on that. Now I've got my light in the light stand. Make sure that's straight. I think that's about as straight as I'm going to get it. Jet with some glue. I'm 
<clears throat> okay, I'm going to put this headlight on here. Well, before I put that on, I do have is a jewel that goes in the headlight So I think I've got most of my small plastic parts in. Um, doo -doo. I've got these two other pieces that go in front of the whistle. Probably should have There's that one. And I'm not going for prototypical here or anything. This is just a small little project for the club. The way we'll have, and I'm not going to convert this to DCC either. This is just for a, a little DC layout. So I think I've got all the plastic on now. Got all the plastic pieces there. I just got to make up the hand railing. And these little brass, well, there's some little brass right in there. You can see that, that go in for the wire. And I'll have to bend that wire around so that won't be anything big uh, I do have a couple of pieces to put on the front yet so and I think most of it is for wire <clears throat> number board to put on um, let's see, there's the number board, cut that little piece of flash off. It goes right in the center. straightened up okay <clears throat> there's that and I think other than 
the railing that is it so I'm gonna turn this off uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna install these little brass pieces and, and cut, <clears throat> cut the wire and then I'll I'll bring you back